my site. I hope I have the right one. So yes, welcome to another session of basic numeracy skills where we learn the skills to solve your BNU and QMI module content. So today we're going to discuss simple interest and compound interest. Since we only have one hour, 30 minutes. Has the recording started? I didn't check, sorry, my bad. I have to go double check. It is recorded. Um, yes, like I said, we're going to be discussing simple interest and compound interest. And we will, if time allows, then we will have lots of other activities because I've, I've included more activities. At a later stage. Okay, before we start with today's session, do you have any questions? Going once, going twice, and it's gone. Okay, in the absence of questions or comments, we can then look at simple interest and compound interest. Now, this um, for today's session, there are, I'm going to show you how to use your calculators. Those who have a financial calculator, the financial functions, the financial maths function, we're only going to use them when we get to the compound, uh, when we calculate compounding periods, and when uh, we do annuities and amortization, the calculator will come in handy. If you do not have a financial calculator and you are planning to buy a financial calculator, I will suggest that you do that as soon as possible. Do not wait a week before you write the exam and think that you are going to practice with your financial calculator and know how to use it then. You need to start now. So if there, if it means you have at least 800, because that's how much that financial calculator cost, go and buy it right now. You can make sure that this week, the next three weeks, you no longer eat takeaways. Uh, you budget that money for takeaways or taking the kids out or doing some fun things. You say, hold on, I need to pass BNU or QMI. I need to invest in this calculator and go and buy that. But for now, with simple interest, we are just going to use your normal functions on your calculator, like a normal calculator, to answer the questions. So what is simple interest and what is discount? By the end of the session, for now, you should learn how to do basic calculations um, if you get questions relating to simple interest or simple discount. A simple interest is interest you pay when you buy or when you borrow or when you invest. When you save money or borrow money, uh, then you pay interest on it. That will be your simple interest. You only pay it once off at the beginning of the day. So it gets calculated at that point. It is um, calculated as a fraction of the amount you are borrowing. So remember, at some point we did percentages. We did calculate what is the percentage of a number. So with interest as well, it is that, propo that uh, proportion or the fraction of that whole uh, in, terms, in relation to that percentage or that interest and your interest will be in percentage. And when we use it, we're going to divide by 100 so that we are able to use it in a decimal format. And because when you borrow something, you borrow it for a period of time. So also the interest will be calculated based on that period that you are taking the money for. Like I said, it is payable at the beginning of the term. And interest because it's an amount, remember? An interest is an amount and an interest rate is that percentage. 
or that fraction that or the proportion that you're going to use to calculate how much. So in terms of interest, the formula we use is I that represents interest. It's given by your principal amount or your present value times the rate, which is the interest rate, times the term or the period, which is the how long you're taking out or you're saving that money for. So it's I is equals to PRT, which is easy and straightforward. If I want to calculate the future value of that interest, then the formula will be your principal amount plus your interest. Already we have defined what our interest is in terms of symbols. Future value is S. Our principal, we're going to use P, and our interest, we're going to use I. But we have already defined what I is. We said I is PRT. So if I replace I with PRT, then the formula changes and becomes S is equals to P plus PRT, which is principal plus interest. However, in math, we can summarize this by taking the common factor. I know that we didn't deal about the common factor because we would have gotten that part when you rewatch some of the videos from last semester as well. So a common factor is the value that both of them look almost exactly the same. So P and P exists in the plus and the plus PRT. There is a P, which is a common factor. If I take it out, if I take it out, then I will, I will be left with one where P is, because if I take out P, I will be left with one. And if I take out P from PRT, I will be left with only one times PRT, oh, sorry, one times RT, which is the same as RT. And the, the formula that you're going to use, and you need to know, it is just as simple as that. The future value of a simple interest is given by your principal amount times your accumulation factor, which is one plus RT. Let's look at an example. If you borrow an amount of 7,500 at an interest rate of 15% per annum or per year, what will you have to pay back if the repayment of the loan is within four months? Now, the other thing I need to bring to your attention is that when we calculate interest or compound, because your interest is per year, so we always use per annum or per year. So it means everything, even including how long, we will always uh, into the def default mode will be a year. It will be a year. So if that is the case, then it means our term that we need to always use needs to be always be converted to a full year. For example, here we have four months. So we need to convert this to a year. We cannot work with four months. We'll have to convert it to a, a year. And to convert a value to a year, the same thing as when you convert a minute to a, an hour, you divide by a 60 seconds or 60, yes, 60 seconds. So we do the same. Or you multiply by 60 seconds, one of the two. So in order for us to convert four months, we need to get it to a year. So therefore we will say four divided by 12. And that should give us what we are looking for. I'm not gonna do that as yet. So, but now let's understand what the question is, give, what they have given us. So with relation to the question given, let's identify, or we know that the question is asking us, how, or what will you have to pay back? Therefore, it means they are asking us to calculate S. That's what the question is asking. What are the facts given? The first one, is our present value. The second one is our interest rate, and our interest rate is R. 
and we know that we need to divide it by 100, so it will be 0 0.15. And the next one, they told us how, for how long we are taking it, and that should be our T, but also we must remember that our T, we need to divide it by 12 to get to convert it to a year. Okay, so now we can substitute into our formula and we know our formula is S is equals to P times one plus RT. So let's substitute. P is 7,500, one plus our R is 0,15 times four over 12, which is our period or our term. Solving the equation, 4 over 12 times 0, 0,15 gives us 0, 0,05. 1 plus 0, 0,05 gives us 1,05. Multiply that with 7,500, and the answer we get is 7,875. And that's how straightforward and easy it is. to find a simple interest. Now, the, in this question, actually, there are a couple of things that are not stated, but that are key to how you're going to identify the question in the assignment or in the exam. Here, because I'm using simple interest as an example, I didn't repeat the statement. Usually, your statement will read as, you borrow an amount of 7,500 at simple interest rate of 15% per year. What will you have to pay back? That's how this statement will read because here yeah, I'm just using an example. In the exam, you won't have an example. They won't tell you which one is which. You need to go into the question and identify those key things, including simple interest rate. And that will guide you in terms of what you need to be calculating. Now let's move to discount. A simple discount is a process of finding where the present value of a given amount that is due on the future value and it includes a simple interest. Now, in other words, the discount is an amount by the simple interest process to find what will be your actual present value or what we call it a discounted value. So it is always the difference between the amount, the your discount amount and its present value. So in order for you to, the discounted amount, because a discounted amount also will be a, a proportion or a fraction of the present value, because you are going to say with how much discount you are giving, and that will give you an amount. And if you take away that amount from the present value, that will give you your actual present value. Okay, so. A simple discount, which is the amount, is given by your present value times the discount rate times the period. The period is the same as the term for how long you are taking this, but for how long you want to discount it for. Where your D is your discount. Can I double check them? A D is a simple discount. A P is your present value or your principal amount. D is a discount rate, also a percentage. And T is the term or the time in years. Let's look at an example. Oh, this is just the same formula. So to calculate a discounted value, remember a discount is the amount, like simple. A simple interest is an um, an interest is an amount. So discount is also an amount. So to calculate a discounted value, which is your new pre present value now, if you, if this is your present value, your new present value will be given by your present value, your previous present value minus the discount amount, and that will give you your actual 
amount that is discounted. So your discounted amount is given by your present value times one minus the discount rate times the period. So if you would have noticed in terms of the future value, we said it was P times one plus RT. So this is accumulation. This is a difference. So you can see with the plus, you can see there with a minus. So for a discount or a future or a present discounted value, we use P times one minus DT. Okay, so Anna borrows 1,200 for 10 months at a discount rate of 15% per annum. Determine the discount and the discounted principal. Here you can answer this question in two ways or you can answer it in one way. So first we can determine the discount because that's what they asked us. Find the discount. That's the first question. What is it that they also gave or asked us? Let's see. Based on this, what are the facts? 1,200 is what they borrowed, so that is our present value. 10 months, that's for how long? That is our T. But remember, it will be T divided by 12 because it should be in years. Let me go back because if you look at something is wrong with my mouse moving up and down. Sorry about that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so this is our discounted amount. Oh, sorry, the term at a discount rate of 15%. So we know that this is our D, a small d, which is 0 0.15 as well, divide by 100. Determine the discount amount. That's what we're going to be using. Let's substitute into the formula. Our P is 1,200. Our D is 15%, which is 0 0.15. And our T, which is the term, is 10 over 12, and we calculate. I've got too many, too many close brackets. And when you calculate, you will get the discount of 150 rand. And from here, they say, what will be the discounted principal, which is the discounted value? You can say uh, 1,000 or your discounted value will be 1,200 minus our discount of 150, and you will get the answer, which is equals to One thousand two hundred minus one hundred and fifty is equals to one thousand fifty. That is the second part. That's how you can answer this question as well. Alternatively, to answer the discount principal, you can use the second formula or that last formula, not the second one, the last one, where it says the discounted value will be equals to your P times one minus DT. And if I substitute P, it's 1,200. One minus D is 0, 0,15 times 10 over 12. And the answer we get will be the same as just using the first one. So you still get 1,050 in both cases. Here is our next exercise. Now, remember we did changing the subject of the formulas and learning how to manipulate an equation. 
So this is one of those kind of questions where you will have to manipulate the equation because if you read this exercise, it says Joseph invests 36,000 at the simple interest rate of 6% per annum or per year. How long will it take for Joseph's investment to grow to 55,000? Now, what are they asking us to do? They are asking us to calculate how long and how long it's T. So T is multiplying with R and it is inside the bracket. So it means we need to make T the subject of the formula. So we can do this in two ways. So I'll do both ways so that you can understand how you can solve the same question if you get them in your assignment or in your exam. Number, oh, step two, what are the facts given that we need to identify? They invest. You must also think when you're working with financial meds, you need to think what is a loan and what is saving. So saving, you only get the money at the end. So if I need to save, if I need to save for a car and I require 120,000 rand to deposit for a whatever the car I'm buying. So because I'm only getting the money, then it is my future value. If I am saving an amount, it means I'm getting, um, if I am, but anyway, I'm gonna confuse you right now. But at the moment, we need to remember, if you are saving, that is your present value because you are putting in the, the money, if you're putting in the money. The loan as well, if you are putting, or they're giving you the money, that will be your present value. So you need to think about it in two ways. Is the money I'm talking about, is it the money I will only get in the future? Then that is the future value. Is the money that I'm talking about, is the money that I'm putting in now, then is the present value, right? And later on, we will expand on those two topics, on those two, how to identify which is which. So in terms of this, I'm investing. So I'm putting it now. So that will be my present value. And they told us that it is at a simple interest rate. So that will be our R of 0, 0,06 because it's 6%. How long? It's a T and the money needs to grow. Therefore, it means it needs in future, I will get 55, which is my S, which is the future value. Now, I know what formula I need to use because the statement said simple interest. It's very important to identify what type of interest you are calculating. Later on, you will see that there are two different, therefore you need to use a different formula. So for simple interest, we use S is equals to P times one plus RT. So since our formula looks like this, the first way you can do is to convert your formula before you do your substitution. Let's convert our formula. So let's take our formula. We know that as, uh, we, if we want to make T the subject of the formula, we can divide this side by P. So therefore we divide this side by P, divide that side by P. P and P will cancel on one side and you will be left with one plus RT and on the other side, you will have S over RT. Uh, S over P is equals to one plus RT. Now we need to get rid of one. We still want to leave T on its own. So the first thing we need to do is take away this one. So to take away one, we go to say S divide by P, because it's positive when it moves over, it will be negative and you will be left with RT. Now from here, you can swap them around because they are equal. This side is equal to the other. I can rewrite this as RT is equals to S over P minus one. 
if I want to get rid of R over T, I can, remember, how do we get rid of R? We can divide this side by R. Therefore, it means we need to divide this side by R. Or you can say we multiply this side by 1 over R. Then we also going to multiply this side by 1 over R. And when I multiply this side by 1 over R, R and R will cancel. And you will be left with T on this side. And you will be left with S over P minus 1 times 1 over R. Otherwise, you can also divide everything here by R. You can divide by R. So if I divide this side by, because one times everything in the bracket will just be um, that. So the answer here you can say is T over S over P minus one times divide by R. You can rewrite it that way. They will give you one, one, one more or less the same, the same answer, those two. And then you can then go ahead and substitute the value. So let's go and use our formula to substitute. Okay, so we have T is equals to S over P minus one divided by R. And our S is 55. Four, four, zero over our P. It's 36,000 minus one. Divide everything by our interest, which is zero comma zero six. And you can go ahead and calculate. And let's calculate the answer because I'm using my Casio, I'm gonna do everything all at once. So it's 55,440 divided by 36,000. And maybe I should be sharing my calculator so that you can see what I am doing. And the answer I get is nine. Nine, yes. That is one way of answering the question. Uh, the other way is by using the same formula. So S is equals to P times one plus RT. We just substitute the values. So the first one, S, is 55,440 equals our P is 36,000 times one plus 0 0.06 T, which is multiplying by T because T we don't have. And you do the same. You divide by 36,000 on both sides. So this side you will have 55,440 divided by 36,000. And you will be left with 1 plus 0 0.06 T. Now we want to remove the 1 to the other side. So we'll be left with 55440. Over. I'm not even solving it. You can see that I am just manipulating the equation without even getting the answer. All right. T. And now I can put everything into bracket 55,440 over 36,000. I forgot the zero there. Minus one equals, oh, sorry, before I put the equal, because I need to get rid of 0, 0,05, 0, 06, 
I'm going to multiply the site by one over zero comma zero six e equals t because I'm getting rid of that zero comma zero five. You can have it that way, or is the same thing as t is equals to fifty five four four zero over thirty six thousand minus one divide by zero comma zero six whichever way and the answer will also still be equals to nine because you can see that the same equation that I just used is the same one. Are there any questions? I might be talking Greek or Japanese or a language that you guys don't understand, but that's how you will answer the question. In the absence of questions, I don't know if you guys hear me or I'm here alone. I didn't even check. Oh, you are all here. You are all here. Okay. So I'm guessing you guys can hear me. And I'm not losing you. But you are more than welcome to stop me or ask any question if you have. Right? So that I don't just talk, 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 talk. And explain, explain, explain. Okay. Let's look at another exercise. Tandy signs an agreement to pay. 20,000 15 months from now. The simple discount rate is 12.5% per annum. The discounted amount she receives now is. <clears throat> so, what is it that they want us to calculate? The question is asking us to find the discounted amount, which is our discounted value. What is it that they have given us? Let's look at the facts given. Tandy signs and agreements to pay a 20,000. So signs and agreements to pay a 20,000 15 months from now. Okay. I'm going to assume that this will be our present value for now because we're going to discount it 15 months is in when, when are we discounting this 15 months will be 15 divided by, by 12. Remember, our term needs to be in years. So since they said months, we just convert the months into a year. And we are also told at the simple discount. So it means we already know which formula to use. And the discount rate, our D of 12%, 12.5% is the same as 0, 0,125. The other thing you need to also pay attention to when you work in financial math is your interest, you keep all the decimal. Do not round off. Do not say that is 12.13. Nope. Keep it with all the decimal. If the, the interest rate was 12.75, you're going to keep all of them. It will be 0, 0,1275. Keep them as they are. Never round them off. Okay, so let's calculate our discount amount so dv because we can just use the the last one and not the second one because then it means i will do two steps if i use the first one so we're just gonna use the second one dv is equals to p times one minus dt our p is twenty thousand one minus our d 
0.125. Multiply that with how long, which is 15 divided by 12. Close bracket. And that is equals to, I'm going to open my calculator. Let's hope it's not going to give me issues. Usually, if I haven't used it the whole day, it stopped working and I have to go and activate it. We'll see that it is not going to work. It's fine. We'll sort it out before I share my entire screen. I just need to activate that. So let me share my entire screen so that when I do use a calculator, you are able to see what I am doing. Okay. Now let's answer this question. 20,000 times open bracket 1 minus 0.125. Open bracket. Action. Uh, sorry, I need to get my calculator back to maths function. And minus open bracket. Uh, no, not yet. Point one two five. Open bracket. Fraction 15 divided by 12. And I need to close the bracket twice. Okay. And what is our discounted value? Will be equals to 16,000. 875, which is option four. And that's how you will calculate the discounted value. Any questions? Ma'am, I'm gonna give you one question and then we, we move into compound interest. This is your question. How much simple interest is payable on a loan of 40,000 borrowed for 22 periods, 22 months period, at a simple rate of 10% per annum? Pay attention to the question. How much simple interest? So it means they're asking you to calculate I. I will be very nice and give you the formula because I'm going to assume that at this moment you have not familiarized too much yourself with the formulas. So I'm just going to tell you which formula you can use. I is equals to P R T. That is the formula to use. So what is the fact given on this question? That is your exercise. And then we can do Feedback just now. I'm going to give you two minutes because this is easy to do.
Are we happy? Are we done? Are we good? Or? Yes, I'm done. Are we? Okay, so let's answer the question. What are the facts given? What is our P? P is 40,000. And what is our R? The interest rate of um, uh, point 10. And what is our T? Uh, 22 over 12. Good, then let's substitute. That will be 40,000 since you have given me the values. It will make my life easier to just copy the values as I see them, 32 over 12. And for those who don't know how, let's show you how to answer the question. I'm not going to use my Casio calculator, fractions and all that. We're going to calculate this manually because it's a division and multiplication. They is they. They all have same priority, so I can work from left to right or right to left. Or it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to first start with the 22 divided by 12. So 22 divided by 12. And I'm going to multiply the answer with 0 0.10. And I'm going to multiply the answer with 40. Thousand, and the answer will be voila, oh, voila, seven three 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 point three three. Okay, so that's one way of answering the question. The other way, because they've got the same priority, you can just continue and say, I'm ho I hope the calculator won't disappoint. Multiply by. I also want to bring to your attention that your calculator has a percentage. So if I press there. 10 and I go shift and I go on the percentage side because it's in in uh, orange you can see that there it represented as a percentage and then I go multiply that by 22 divide by 12 because multiplication and division have the same priority and it will give me the same answer it only works with multiplication and division so it will still give you the same answer. Alternatively, I can use the fraction, which is 40,000. Now I'm just playing around with my calculator. I'm sorry for those who I am wasting their time. So I'm going to use the same shift 10%. And I'm going to put it in the bracket. Then I'm going to open again my bracket and I'm going to put my fraction and say 22 and move down and say 12 and close bracket and I press equal. And you will see that I still come back to the same answer. So you just need to know how to use your calculator, but I'm just playing around on my uh, Casio calculator because this is the only last time that I'm using a Casio calculator to demonstrate probably. Okay, we're not gonna answer this, but looking at this question, it says you can take a picture of it and then work it out. If you still unsure how to find the answer, we can discuss it on WhatsApp. I want to move to compound interest. We only left with 30 minutes or so or less. Jafta invested one, one half of his savings in a bond that is paid uh, 9.5 interest, simple interest per year for two years and received a 589 as your simple, as your interest or as his interest. What is the value of his total saving making the investment? What they are asking you here is to calculate what would be his total savings. So now you need to think about it because here they say they invested one half. So you need to be able to take 
any amount and take one half of it and say that would be your investment where you will get an interest. Remember interest? This they would have calculated it by using I is equals to P, PRT, right? So you have your interest, you have your 9.5, you have your period for how long? For two years. So you can calculate your P, right? So if you know what your P was, you will know what your interest is. And then they just want to know what will be their total savings. So what is the one half? So subtract one half of, to get the one half of that, that will give you your savings or the total savings. You will have to calculate based on that. So that's one thing that you can calculate on your own. And I just want to see if you have learned something today that I haven't teach you or taught you that you can do on your own. In summary, in terms of simple interest, we've learned that interest is the amount you pay and we can calculate it by using that formula. I is equals to PRT, the future value of a simple interest. It's given by S is equals to P times one plus RT. And if we want to find present value, you can just change the subject of the formula and make P the subject of the formula by taking the accumulation factor divided by P that will give you your present value. For a simple discount, we also learn the same. Discount is the amount that is um, the amount that is discounted by that fraction or the proportion, and the discount value is the actual discount amount after uh, you take out the discount value or the discount the discount from your present value. Okay, so now let's move to a new topic called a compound interest. So here, if you have a financial calculator, you are able to use your financial uh, functions on your calculator, but you need to practice and you need to follow the steps I'm giving you because the steps are the same from today until you go write the exam, you will be using the same step, it's just changing in terms of what is given but the steps are almost exactly the same. So in terms of compound interest, you just need the calculator, whether it's a financial calculator or a scientific calculator, you can still use your calculator, but more especially financial calculator saves time. And you need to also know the formulas because not always you need to rely on your calculator to do the calculations because they can just give you a formula and ask you if it's correct by just substituting the values into that formula. You just need to know how to substitute the values into your formulas and which formulas are correct. And you need to know how to manipulate your equations. Okay, so in the next 30 minutes, or 30, 30 to 30, 35 minutes, we're going to learn to do the basic calculation uh, not for time value of your money, only for compound interest in this instance. So what is compound interest? It is interest on interest. So with the first one, which is simple interest, you only pay it once off at the beginning of the term. Simple interest, you pay it every depending on your period. If you take, if depending on your compounding period, if you are saying you want to pay interest, on a monthly basis, you will be charged interest on a monthly basis, and you will have to pay interest on that. And remember, the interest you will be paying will be built, you will be calculated based on the previous interests as well that you have earned or you um, were included. So it's interest on top of other interest. When the interest is earned on an investment and is not withdrawn but left in the bank, it will accumulate interest on top of it. So to calculate compound interest, the formula looks like this. At the future value of compound interest is given by your present value or your principal amount times one plus the rate to the power of your period. Now, the other thing with the compound interest is the following. Because we talk about compound interest, we talk about the compounding periods. 
you need to remember and always know that on this formula, there are certain things that are not visible, but they need to be there. You need to know that your T is T. You need to multiply it with the compounding period. You need to know that this R, you need to divide it by the compounding period. So what I will suggest you do is do these calculations outside of the formula and come back and substitute it into the formula with the actual T value that you would have multiplied with the compounding period and your R value that you would have divided by the compounding period and substitute them into this formula. And you will see why, because it becomes more complex when you have your T, T to the power. Uh, a value to the power of t times the compounding periods. And, and, and so to clean it up, just do the calculations first and then substitute into the formula. So, and I've already said it in there. R is divided by the compounding periods and t is multiplied by the compounding period. Now, when what what is it that I'm talking about when I talk to about the uh, compounding periods. So your periods can differ, but always remember it has to build up to a year. So if we talk about a days, like your periods are in days, then how many days make up a year? There are 365. We do not include the leap years at this point. We only use the normal uh, calendar without the leap years. How many weeks are there in a year? There are 52 weeks that builds up a year. How many months? There are 12 months that builds up a year. That is why when we were calculating quarterly monthlies and all that, we were dividing the months by, by, by 12. Um, if it was quarters, let's say they would have given you in three quarters, then we would have divided those quarters by four because we know that the quarters divided by four will make up a year. So if we talk about three months or quarterly, then you need to pay attention. In, in, in your exam or assignment, they might trick you by using words like in three months. Uh, it's payable in three monthlies or three months. You must know that three months make up a quarter and a quarter is equals to four, right? There are four quarters in a year. If they say six months, semester, uh, biannually, half yearly, uh, then you need to know that there are only two of them. A year is divided by two six months. The first six months and the second six months makes up a year. So there are only two of them. Even if you work with semesters, there is semester one and semester two, they make up two six months of the year. Okay, so there are two of them. A year, there is, it can also be called one year or yearly or annual. Remember that if they say annually, they refer to a year. If they say biannually, they refer to half year or six months. So you just need to know the compounding periods, the right compounding periods to multiply with the period and the right compounding period to multiply or to divide the interest. So for example, if they say compounded monthly, know that 12% will be divided by 12. And your period, if they said it's two years, will be multiplied by 12. If they say by annually or half yearly, know that you will divide your interest by two and you will multiply your period by two. Okay, let's look at an example. We're not gonna draw too much on this. So, calculate the compound, compounded amount of 500 invested for 10 years at seven and a half per annum compounded annually. Now, what is it that the question is asking us to do? Calculate the compounded amount. Therefore, it means they want us to calculate the future value. That is the future value. What is it that they have given us? What are the facts given in this statement? We are given our present value 
we are given the T, we are given the ray. So I'm just going to write, for now, I'm just going to write the R of, we need to divide this. This is the same as 7.5. So it means it will be 0, 0,075, right? And they told us that it is compounded. It's compounded annually. So our compounding periods are equals to one. That is very important to note and know. So it means in a way we would have multiplied our 10 years by one multiplied our rate by what? It doesn't really matter. You can just leave it as it is because 10 times one is 10. But let's calculate. This is the formula that we need to be using. So we just substitute into this formula. We're looking for S. So P is 500 plus uh, times one plus our rate will be zero comma 0.75 divided by 1. Did I multiply the? Oh, gosh. I multiplied instead of divide. So we divide 0 0.075. This is just for explanation purpose. You do, if, it, if it's compounded annually, you don't even have to worry about the 1 because 0 0.075 is the same as 0 0.075 if you divide it by 1. 10 times 1, which will just be the same as 1 plus 0, 0,075, which will give us 1,075 to the power of 10. And to solve the power, so we solve what is inside the bracket with the power. So 1,075 to the power of 10 gives us 2.06103. Multiply that with 500, and the answer we get is... 1030.52 because it's rent. Always remember, money is always to two decimals, right? Your answer should always be in two decimals unless the options are in whole numbers, and then you just make sure that you round off correctly as well. Now, this is when you are calculating manually, especially for those ones who do not have a financial calculator. If you have a financial calculator that looks like this, then the buttons here at the top are the ones that are important to you. You need those buttons plus the second function plus the on and off. What else you need? You need the ENT and your numerical value. But not only that, you also need this plus or minus. It's very important. So those are the most important buttons you're going to be using. So let's answer the same question using our financial calculator. Now, this is very, very important, especially now while you are still busy with your assignment and in preparation for you to go and write the exam, you need to practice. This you cannot remember overnight before the day you go write the exam. The steps I tell you, they are almost exactly the same from now on until, until we get to amortization. But you need to practice. And practicing means you don't have to just jump and go onto your calculator and start calculating. Write the steps down before you use your calculator so that you make sure that you have... And my bag. I'm low chili. Are you able to hear me? I hear you. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I am load shading. Okay. I needed to connect quickly to another. Okay. 
All right, so it's very important to, I'm not sure where you lost me actually, but anyway, you need to make sure that you write the steps down. So the first step on using your calculator, it's always clearing your calculator by pressing, I forgot to also include the, the mode button. So you go into press, second function, you go into press second function and then press the mode button where there is CA on top. That is the first step on every time you start doing any calculation. That is very important because everything we're going to be doing right now, you're going to be storing the information in your calculator. If you don't clear your calculator, you will still have data stored or the numbers stored in your calculator and you might get the wrong answer. So make sure that this is the first thing you do. Second function CA, then we need to capture the compounding periods. So to capture the compounding periods, we go into press first, second function, and you go into press on top of I and Y. There is the orange button that is P slash Y. That is our compounding period function. And for now, because it's for practice purpose, we're going to do this step. And you're going to press button number one, which is one for the compounding periods because they were yearly. So it's one. And you're going to press E and T. And once you have done that step, then you are ready to go to the next step. You need to press on and off your calculator. Once you have captured your compounding periods, you can go on and off your calculator and now you are ready to capture this information given. What information I'm talking about? We know that we're looking for S or right now, I need to change the text. So the compounded amount now changes on your calculator, you're going to write F, V, because that's what we're going to be using on your calculator. This changes to PV because that's what we have on our calculator. The number of years, that is N, we're going to capture it on N, and our rate is going to change to I and Y. Now, the other thing that I need to stress is that Remember, in the manual thing, we said the period we multiply with the compounding periods, you're still going to do that. Nothing changes when it comes to the period. The interest, we said we divide by the compounding periods. Now I'm going to tell you that for the interest, when you are using a financial calculator, you're going to capture it the way you see it right now, you're not going to divide that by a hundred. You capture it the way you see it. You are also not going to multiply it with the compounding periods. The calculator will do that automatically in the background, in memory. Okay, so done explaining that. Now let's capture the information given. The first one that you need to capture, it's very, very important. For a present value, future value payment, every time you capture those three things, one of them should have, if they are all in the question and you are given all of them and you need to uh, capture them, only one of them will have a plus or minus in front of it. Otherwise, if you don't put a plus or minus on any one of them, your answer will be negative. So. The first thing you do is press plus or minus and then press the value, which is 500, and then press present value. Very important. Plus or minus, not the plus or minus. Some people like to press the subtraction and addition. Not that one. This function right here, the plus or minus of the function that is part of your calculator. That plus or minus, and then you press in the value of your present value because that's the value they gave you. If they have given us the future value, we would have put plus or minus the future value 
um, so the value of the future value. So once you have captured your present value, now let's put in and my computer computer stuck. Now we put in the interest. Now with interest, remember this is seven point five. So with interest, always remember you capture it the way you see it. So you're going to just press 7.5. You're just going to press 7.5. And, and my, bit, my laptop battery is almost done. Uh, 7.5. And you press the I and Y button. You just press I and Y button, it will store your interest. The next one is to put in the period. Putting in the period, we first press the period, so it's 10. And then you press second function. And because we press the second function, it means we're calling the orange button there, this orange button. And then we need to store the value and then you press N again. You will press N twice. So you will say 10, second function, N, N again. So this step is the same as pressing N and N again, because second function N, and then press N to store the value. And you will see that it will say 10, you, will, you would have pressed 10 and then multiply by the compounding periods. And when you press N, it will give you the actual value. If it was N times 12, it will give you 120 after you press the second value. Okay, so now we are ready to compute or calculate our future value. The only thing you do, Ah, is press comp, which is this, compute future value. Those are the only two things. And when you press that, it will give you 1030.52. I hope you have followed the same step on your calculator in order for you to be able to see what I have just done. Unfortunately, I do not have an emulator for a sharp financial calculator, so I can't show you on the screen. I only have a manual one, and now with my network done, the house is dark city, and I can't even open any other application on my computer because my battery is almost finished. I hope it will allow us to finish the session. How long do we have? 15 minutes. How long do I have? Battery life. Let's all see. Oh gosh. I have 49 minutes, which it will get us to the end. Maybe I should minimize the brightness. Unfortunately, I cannot close any application on my computer but it's fine 15 minutes we will we'll get through it okay so now let's recap on what we just learned so we've learned how to calculate the compound interest now what we haven't done it's a lot of exercises we're gonna do that just now don't worry in the next 15 minutes we'll look at more exercises i just want to bring to attention especially those with uh, no financial calculator. You need to be able to know how to change the subject of the formula. For example, if they ask you to calculate the period, how long, and they gave you, and they said it is time uh, compounded quarterly or, or yearly, then you need to know how to get T down by using the logarithm. You need to know how to use the log. In BNU, where they do not teach you the logarithm, also is yes, in BNU, they do not teach you the logarithm. 
but in QMI, they teach them the logarithm. So you will only learn about the logarithm in QMI than in, in BNU, but you are expected to know how to answer questions like this. So you need to go and practice and learn how to change the subject of the formula, or you will need to go and memorize or write down or keep it safe somewhere, all these iteration formulas so that you can use them to answer your question. For example, like if they ask you to find R, R is, it is inside a closed bracket and it is to the power of a value. So how do you get that? You need to be able to know how. So this is part of exponents and powers. We didn't cover that section, so but you just need to know how to manipulate the expressions as well. Okay, now let's look at more exercises. Let me not stress you even further. So those with a financial calculator, you do not have to worry too much about this, but you need to also know how to do this in case they ask you a question relating to this and they just substituted the values and they're asking you which one is the correct way of substituting and calculating R, the rate or the how long. So you need to know also, but you don't have to know how to calculate it using that because your financial calculator steps are as easy as ABC. So let's look at this question. I'm gonna do one and then you guys do one before the end of the session. So calculate the accumulated amount after three years. If 5,000 is invested at an interest rate of 10% compounded quarterly. So what does the question ask? Calculate the accumulated amount, which means I am, I'm gonna do this one for the manual people first, and then we're gonna do for the uh, financial calculator. So you will go ahead and say accumulated amount. It means they're asking me to calculate the future value. After three years, that is how long, that is T. Um, if 5,000 is invested, therefore it means this will be my present value at an interest rate of 10%, that is my rate and it is compounded quarterly. Therefore, my compounding periods, there are four. Now, immediately after doing that, you go back and you say three times four is equals to 12. The P will stay and you go to the rate and say 0 0.10 divide by four. Remember, we divide by the compounding period. And you can even go ahead and find the answer. If it's long, then I will suggest that you just use it as it is. So let's see. Um, 0 0.10 divided by 4 is 0 0.025. So there are 10. 0 0.025. That is my rate. So we need to calculate S is equals to T times one plus R to the power of T. I'll just substitute the values that I've already calculated. So it's 5,000 times one plus, instead of using 0 0.10 divided by four, I'll just use 0 0.025, which makes it easier, to the power of 12, instead of using three times 12, I just use the value as I see it. So this will be 5,000 times 1.025 to the power of 12, and I can get the answer. So the answer would be, I'll need to take out my calculator and do the calculation. So, because my thingy failed. That's why it does this. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a calculator right now. It's uh, 6,724 and 44 cents. 
24 and 44 cents. Yes, Thank number you. two. Thank you very much. That is, if you have calculated manual, if you have a financial calculator, this is what you will do. So with a financial calculator, you will go ahead and do the same. Identify what the question is asking you to calculate. So you will say that is the future value, right? The amount, how long, that is the period, which is your N. The present value, that's PV. Your interest is I slash Y. The quarterly compounded periods, You can write it as P slash Y, or because you're going to remember which one is which that you're going to be using. So the first step you do, second function, CA. You see, what I'm doing is what I expect you to do when you answer questions like this, especially now when you are practicing, right? Then second function, P slash Y, and then you put in the compounding periods. They were four, and you press E and T, and you go on and off your calculator. Then we are given the present value, so plus or minus 5,000, and that is our present value. You will press the present value function, and we can press three. Uh, let's start with the interest. Interest is 10. So you will press 10 and press I and Y. Remember, as you see it, 10 is 10. You don't divide it by 100. You just put it as it is. And the period is three years. You put the three, you press second function. And here, because I don't want to write multiply by N, and I'm just going to say second function and then press N, N twice. Because you need to press N twice, right? And when you are done, you say com FV, and the answer should be the same as 6,724.44. You will have to practice doing the steps in order for you to be able to know how. You will see when we do annuities, we just change present values and future values to payment and future values and payment and future and present values, they just the same. We only change that part and this part. That is the only thing. If you are asked to calculate interest, you will be given future value. So if you are if you are calculating the same and they gave you, they want you to compute interest. Comp I and Y then you will just do plus or minus your PV and you will put the value of your future value without putting the plus or minus. Remember only one of them will have a plus or minus and then you will do your value. Remember that will be your value. The value, second function, and, and again, and then comp I and Y. You just swap around. Unlike those who are calculating manually, if they didn't give you R or they're asking you to calculate R, you will have to manipulate this equation to get to R. So for you, you just write the steps as they are. You can see that the steps, the only thing that doesn't change is the top part. They will always stay like that for every step. You first start with clearing your calculator and then capturing your compounding periods and turning your calculator on and off. And then you can do all the manipulation here at the bottom. The top part stays for all the calculations. You, they will be the same. The only thing that changes is what you are given, the facts given, and what you need to be calculating. Okay, enough with me saying a lot of things. So let's look at more activities. So this one is your example. I'm going to give you the formula, I'm going to give you the steps for those who are doing financial calculations or using a financial calculator. I expect both of you to work it out and then we can compare the answers. 
So with a deposit of 1,200, Debra opened a savings account paying 5.8 interest annually, compounded monthly. She agently withdrew a sum of 800 after five years. How much will she have accrued in her travel account four years after withdrawing the 800? The amount must be rounded off to the nearest. Okay, so here is the catch with all this. You will have to calculate how much they have saved up in five years time. And then you will have to take the balance of that five years time and calculate four years to see how much she would have had after withdrawing the 800 because four years after withdrawing the the uh, the amount is you are the interest will be adding on onto the balance that is still there in the account right so let's first calculate the five years so you will use S is equals to your P times one plus your R to the power of T. Those ones calculating with a, calcul a financial calculator, second function, CA, unless if it's me. Oh yeah. And second function, P slash Y. And where I put blocks, it means you need to replace it with the actual value. And then you will press E and T and go on and off your calculator. Plus or minus. And this is the deposit, which is the present value. And our interest, which is I and Y. And you need to put the amount, how long, five years, which that is second function, and, and again. And then you will need to comp, uh, what do you need to comp here? You will need to comp future value, and then once you get the answer of a future value, you will need to subtract the 800. What I forgot to do here is also for you, once you have calculated this, you will need to subtract 800. And that will give you your balance after five years. But remember it says how much she would have accrued in her travel account four years after withdrawing the 800. So it means from getting that S, we need to calculate another S with the new balance, with the new new money that is on there. That it will be left RT to the power. So also the same, once you get this, you go back, you go back there, you change only that value. You say plus or minus, you get the value. So you will get the answer. The answer you get, you just, you don't have to change everything. You just say, you repeat the step, plus or minus, and you put there the present value. You don't have to change the interest. You just change the period. It's four years. And yeah, instead of five now, you just say four second function then. So the only steps for the second time you change are those two, and then you comp future value. And the answer you get, that should be the answer. And no, it's not just the answer because 
yeah, that will be the answer because they want to know how much they would have occurred. Okay, so. And remember those who are calculating manually, your R, you need to divide 0, 0.058 by the compounding periods, they are monthly, so you divide by 12. Your periods, also remember, it will be five multiplied by 12. Don't forget that. Are we winning? And remember, they say rounded off, right? Are we winning? If not, let me help you because we are we ran out of time. So you just go ahead and I'm just going to remove this step that I've added right now. Yes so that then we can have the answer properly done. 1,200 times one plus our rate. I don't have the answer to that. 0 0.058 divided by 12 to the power of five multiplied by 12. And when you do this, probably the answer will be 1,600.
the answer is 1,600 and 2.59. And we need to subtract 800. Remember, I had the 800 there. If we subtract 800, because they say she withdrew that much, because she takes away the 800, then she will be left with 802.59. Right, and we need to take this, how much accurate after four years. We take our new 802.59, multiply by one plus our rate, because they didn't say anything whether it changed or not. So we're going to assume that it's still the same, right? And because now we know that it is only after four years, so it will be four times 12, which you can calculate. And that gives us 110. Uh, the answer will be 1011.60. But they said you need to run it off to the nearest rent. And therefore, to the nearest rent, this is one, one, oh, one, two. That is the nearest rent. That is the answer. In terms of the financial calculations, compounding periods, they are monthly. So you will have on your steps, you can just double check if you captured everything correctly. You just press the 12. And you press uh, 1,200, you would have pressed 5.8, and you would have put in five years and compute uh, the answer, and then you will still also get the same as what they had, which is 1,600 and 2.59, and then you subtract 800. And the answer you get would have been 802.59. So what you do, you don't have to clear your calculator in this instance because it's still the same thing. You just press plus or minus, and then you press the 802.59, and then you store the new number. That's what you do. Ask lot of tongue off, guys. That battery died, man. And it is Lee. Is Lee? Your battery is all right, us. Oh, need to some more look now. Especially if you don't have that um that financial calculator money. Yeah, I say I'm saying I'm not out of it. What I'm to track? I get zero with what I'm to track. Wait, wait, we must stop the recording, people. Oh. Okay, go scan my guys. See you later. Okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>